Hello, and welcome to the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Images. Let me introduce you to Isabel. In Isabel's work, I'm researching visual culture. She writes a number of papers and articles. She often likes to add visual elements to support the ideas and concepts that she is expressing. Just makes things clearer, you know? She draws images, takes photos, and creates tables, graphs, and charts. As soon as Isabel creates any of these images, they are automatically protected by copyright. They are? And, as the sole rights holder, Isabel can essentially do whatever she wants with them. Isabel is pretty proud of the images she creates. Well, I mean, I'm no Picasso, but they're not the worst. And she has started thinking about sharing them. Yeah, sharing them can increase the visibility of my work, and can also help other people who want to add visual elements to their own work. But, before Isabel starts sharing her work, she needs to consider a few things. I'm listening. How does she want to use her images, both now and in the future? How does she want others to use her work? Essentially, what rights does she want to retain, and what rights is she willing to license or transfer to others? Hmm. In some cases, Isabel may want to simply put her images on her personal website. Or, in other cases, she may want to include them in a presentation she is making. In the event that Isabel would be publishing her images along with her research in a journal or book, she would need to make sure that she understands the terms of the publishing agreement before signing it. She should consider retaining the right to continue using her images in the future. If Isabel decides to share her images openly on a website, she needs to tell people who visit that site how she would like them to be used. She can do this by adding a statement or open license, like a Creative Commons license. For some of my images, I think a CC license would be great because I don't mind if other people use them at all. Adding such a statement or license will allow Isabel to quickly and easily inform others about how they can use her images. For some images, Isabel may simply want to be attributed as the creator, giving as much freedom as possible to others to use her images. In other cases, she may want to restrict commercial uses or prevent others from sharing modifications of her work. Hmm, sounds good. Isabel should also know that some sites where she wants to share her images may require her to agree to the terms and conditions before uploading them. You mean those things I never read? In some cases, these terms may allow site operators to modify her images and create derivative works, which might conflict with her own uses of the work. Whoa, good to know. Hmm, while I'm here, maybe I should see what images other people have created. What happens if Isabel finds an image that somebody else created and she really wants to use it in her work? Whoa, love! This one would be perfect on the cover of my first book! Just as any image that Isabel creates is protected by copyright, so are most images created by others. If Isabel really wants to use this image, then she needs to find out if there are limitations on its use. Hmm, let's see... If this image is in the public domain, then Isabel can use the image any way she likes, without asking for permission. If the image has an open license, such as a Creative Commons license or any other terms of use, then those terms should govern how Isabel uses the image. If the terms of use are unclear, Isabel will have to contact the rights holder for clarification. Oh, I can't tell with this one. Isabel is lucky and works at a large institution that has its own copyright office, so she can ask them if she is unsure about how she can use the image. Hey, copyright librarian, can I ask you a question? Isabel should also know that some uses of the image may be allowable under the fair dealing provisions or other exceptions in the Copyright Act. Hmm. I guess because I would want it for my book cover, I don't think my use of it would fall under fair dealing or any other exceptions in this case. Ugh, and I still can't find a license. If Isabel can't find the terms of use information for the image or any contact information for the rights holder, and the exceptions in the Copyright Act do not apply to her use of the image, she should consider using a different image. Well, I'll explore some other options, I guess. <sighs> if she still really wants to use the image, she can contact the Copyright Board of Canada to apply for a license to use a work for which the copyright owner is unlocatable. Oh, this Creative Commons one is also good. And I know it's terms of use, so maybe I'll just use this one instead. At the end of the day, it is likely easier for Isabel to use one of her own images or a Creative Commons licensed image, because she knows exactly how she can use them. Wikimedia and an advanced Google search are two ways she can find Creative Commons images. I watched a video about that, actually. And hey, if I use a Creative Commons license for my images, other people can easily use them too. 
you should now be able to recognize the rights associated with images you use, either your own or others, identify applicable terms of use when you want to use someone else's images in your own work, understand the difference between using public domain images and images protected by copyright, including those with a Creative Commons license, and determine what to do when you want to use someone else's images in your own work. This has been the University of Alberta's Opening Up Copyright Instructional Module on Images. Thank you for your attention.